Have you recently upgraded your heating and air system and you're seeing a problem? Maybe the new system is louder than the old system was, at least the indoor unit is. Maybe the new system doesn't dehumidify as well as the old system does. This is something that I'm seeing happen a lot in our industry and there's a reason for it that we're gonna talk about in this video. I'm gonna get in a little bit of trouble. I've done videos, I've been called out a few times. A lot of heating and air folks, folks that are a part of our trade, don't like it when you call out things that they're doing wrong or that others are doing wrong. They think it hurts our trade. They'll say you're hurting our brothers in the trade. And I just got to say, I'm not here to make enemies. I'm here to give information. I'm here to give information to mom. If mom's about to buy a heating and air system, if your mom is about to buy a heating and air system, I want her to make a good decision. She's about to spend a lot of money. And if that means I'm hurting my brothers or sisters in this trade that are doing things incorrectly. I'm sorry, we're not really brothers here. We're not really friends. I'm not here to hurt your feelings. I'm here to, to help folks. I'm here to tell folks, hey, this is not right. These things are not being done. And maybe it's because of ignorance or laziness, or maybe you just don't care. Whatever the reason is, I don't think that any of those are an okay reason. I don't think any of those are okay for homeowners to have to put up with some of the things in our trade. And I'm not perfect. I've done videos where I've had to backtrack on a, a few things. Maybe I've had to say things a little different or explain myself a little bit better. I understand that no one's perfect. I'm not saying that if someone makes a mistake that they are a problem in our industry. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm saying if you're a homeowner and you buy a heating and air system and you go with a higher end system, right? So we've got systems that you can look at the sear ratings, right? So it could be a, like a, a lower 14 or 15 sear during the making of this video. Of course, now everything's sear too, but you get it. And then we've got other systems that are way up above, say 20 sear, 25 sear in some cases. If you're comparing those systems and you go with a higher end system, why are you having these issues? It's supposed to be better. It's supposed to alleviate some of these problems. And we're going to talk about that in this video. We're going to talk about why you're having problems and some of the solutions that need to be done to make sure you don't have these issues. Now, first, let me backtrack a little bit and say, if you do buy a higher end system, I'm not saying don't, we sold probably more higher end equipment at my company than we sold lower end equipment. So we were a Daikin dealer. Daikin has sponsored some of the content on our channel here. And so when we would sell a Daikin system, we sold a lot of Daikin fits, high end communicating inverter systems, or even 20 plus SEER systems, systems that save folks lots of money on their energy bills. A lot of these systems have to be installed correctly, or you will have loud indoor units or high static ductwork issues, performance issues, or low dehumidification. So let's talk about why that is. This is going to be a little bit more drawn out, longer video of mine, but I want to dive deep into this. So if you follow this, if you stick around through the, this video, you have a better understanding of why you're having a problem, why this is an issue. Part of the problem here is, as we get into this, a lot of folks in our industry will hear inverter, right? So they'll know that the system has the capability of ramping down, right? And especially if it's a communicating systems where the indoor and outdoor unit and even the thermostat, all of that can talk to one another. And so they'll think, that the system can do almost like what a mini split can. If a mini split being that the indoor and outdoor units can communicate and the system is set to auto, that system will ramp down, be barely running at times. And that's ultimately what we would want to see with a communicating inverter system. Because of that, a lot of guys will intentionally oversize these systems. They'll say, well, you know, let's have the extra capacity because this system can ramp down. And that's a huge problem. We'll talk about why in just a moment, but that's a huge problem. They automatically think because this system can ramp down that it can alleviate humidity issues. It can alleviate capacity issues if the system was oversized for that space. 
and it can alleviate ductwork issues because that system can ramp down. That's not how it works. I wish it was. I wish that system could magically know that it's installed with undersized ductwork and say, oh, I have the capability of being a five ton system, but I'm in a space that's only needing two tons of capacity and ductwork that is size probably, it's probably undersized. So only one and a half tons of capacity. And so I'm just going to ramp down. I know I have this capability of being this jet engine, this big diesel motor, but because I have the capability to let my foot off the gas and ramp down that it's just going to magically work that way. And that's just not how it works. The reason you could be having a problem, if you're a homeowner and you bought a heating and air system, you went with a higher end system. A lot of times I'll even hear folks say, I updated my system. I replaced it. I went with a higher end system. My old system didn't have these problems. My old system didn't have the issues that I'm now having with this new system. And it must be a problem with the brand or the product that I bought. And the truth is it's a problem with the installer or the person that at least sold the job, that they came out to your home and they should have inspected the ductwork. They should have checked static pressures at least after the product was installed. But, you know, a before would be nice, right? If the system still can run, you could throw your static meter on there. At bare minimum, have someone that's going to go around and count the amount of vents there are and look at the size of the ducts going to those vents and making sure that the ducts are somewhat installed decent so that we don't have huge amounts of static or big turns in the ductwork or whatever. You know, just overall, just kind of looking at the job. I do think there's an argument. I've heard this argument before, Josh. These guys do this every day. They can almost look at a system. I actually can do that. I can look at a system and almost tell you if this ductwork is undersized for the system that is installed there. Almost. Just because of experience. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying that I can just look at every system and just automatically know my static pressure is this. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if I walk into a house, if I see a 14 inch round duct coming off of a three ton air handler, I know just from experience, mm, that's too small. That's, that's a very small duct coming off of there. Right? So a lot of guys will make that argument. I, I'm not saying that it's, there's nothing to be said for folks that do this every day. They know the product that they're selling and all of that. I'm simply saying if the contractor didn't even look, if the salesperson didn't even walk around and look at all the vents and the duct work and make sure that there's no big problems, that when you get to the end of the job and the installers installed the system, now you're having these issues because that's how it always happens. You find out after the fact that the salesperson, the first person that came to your house should have done these things. They should have done a load calculation. They should have looked at the duct sizing to make sure you're not going to have high static problems. And they should have you know, done all these things. That's when you find out that they didn't, right? After the fact, now that you're having problems. Or maybe you're not even having super big problems, but your electric bill's not as good as you thought it would be, right? You went with this really high-end system, but now your electric bill comes in a month after that and you thought you'd see a little more savings. Or the system ain't as quiet as you thought it would be. There's, you're not necessarily having problems, but you went with this higher-end system and now it sounds like a jet engine blowing out of those vents. Let's talk about why. The reason is in the old days, we had something called PSC motors. And so ultimately I could spend a whole hour on this topic, but I'm going to make it pretty simple and skim over. You've probably already watched a lot of this video and I'm not going to drag it out too much, but ultimately PSC motors, when it would be in a high static environment would slow down, that the amp draw would even go down, that the motor would move less air. And when that happens, the system, as long as it doesn't slow it down, too much, the system might become a little quieter, but the other flip side of that coin, we'll get back to motors in just one second. Flip side of that coin is just generally across our industry. Most guys would agree that if you want to increase latent capacity, latent cooling, meaning make that system dehumidify better, then you might slow down the airflow, make the coil, the evaporator coil colder 
and temperature, and that's how you dehumidify better. I remember there were some old carrier systems that used to have these controllers called thermistats, and it controlled humidity better than most cooling systems, and that's simply what it was doing. It was affecting the airflow, the speed of the motor to increase latent capacity. The problem when you do that is you decrease sensible capacity in some cases. Not, I mean, there's exceptions to every rule, but generally if we're increasing latent capacity, we might be losing a little bit of sensible capacity, meaning you're not going to have as much oomph. You're not going to have a system that's going to blow hard into that area and cool that space down as fast. And so back to our example, back to our motors, if we had a PSC motor that we have a high static location, undersized ductwork, and it affects the airflow, the PSC motor has to slow down, that that system actually would dehumidify better because by default, the high static was making the motor run less. It moved less air, if that makes sense. The problem is now with these newer efficiency systems, we now have constant torque motors. Some guys will call those ECM motors, even though there's technically ECM motors that are variable, but again, constant torque motors or variable speed motors, constant CFM, constant airflow motors. Both of them will increase if it sees any static, like a higher static and it needs to push more air, it will increase a little bit. Now that starts to level off with a constant torque, depending on how high the static is, but with a constant CFM, it tries to power through that. And so you've got this high static because you've got undersized ductwork and now this motor that won't give up. And that's why, because when that motor increases, that PSC motor would actually slow down a little bit from that high static. When that constant airflow or constant CFM motor, variable speed motor increases and starts pushing more air through there, that's when you start to hear homeowners say, I went with the higher end system, but the indoor unit is louder than my old system. That the indoor unit sounds like a jet engine. And that's usually why. Either the ductwork is too small or for some other reason, they've got really high static and they can hear the vents making noises they never made before. They sound like that jet engine or they sound like some of them will even whistle. But the other thing, remember the, the example with the PSC motor would slow down and move less air and dehumidify better. It get increased latent capacity with a constant CFM. It's powering through. It is not lowering the airflow in a lot of these cases. And because of that, it does not dehumidify as well. I don't want to get any specifics, but I was privy to a conversation, a, a job where a contractor installed a high-end system and now the system does not dehumidify as well. There's lots of reasons why that could be. You know, you could look at things like airflow and refrigerant levels and is the system operating correctly and all of that stuff, right? But the other thing, that one of the first things we needed to look at was static pressures. Do we have the proper amount of external static pressure that that system is calling for, or at least close? Maybe it will be a little bit higher, but are we even close here? Because if not, then that customer is going to experience humidity problems where they're going to say the humidity levels are higher in here than they used to be with my old clunker, my old system that was 20 years old dehumidified better than this new fancy variable speed inverter system, communicating inverter system. If you found this video because you went with a higher end system and now you're having problems with the humidity, it's louder than it used to be. There are things that can be done to the ductwork. There are things that can be done to the system to try to account for some of this, but ultimately you're gonna be throwing mud on the wall if things are not being done correctly. That contractor now, whether you stay with the same one that didn't do the job right the first time, or you switch to another one, needs to get their static pressure meter out, manometer, whatever they use. They need to look at the duct sizing and the fact that there is static added to every bend in that system, the length of the system, the sizing of that system, the filter that you use, all of that adds static there. Are vents completely open? Are they covered? That again will also add static. Hopefully this helps if you're dealing with any of this. I know this is a little more long-winded, a little more drawn out than my average video, maybe a little more in depth than I normally get, especially when I'm talking to end consumers or homeowners. 
but it's a big problem that we're seeing in our industry. Ductwork has always been a problem. Ductwork has always been undersized, but I'm meeting contractors from time to time that don't even own a static meter. They, they don't own a manometer, whatever they need to use to test the static pressures. They, they don't own anything. And that's a huge problem, especially if they are the ones that are specking these jobs, selling you the systems. They need to have the tools to do the job correctly. What are your thoughts? Have you dealt with any of this? Did you go with a high-end system and it was louder than the old system or you're dealing with humidity issues? Maybe you had to have some tweaks done to that system, maybe some ductwork alterations or even a dehumidifier installed in your home. I'd love to hear about that. Leave me a comment down below. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about how Walmart is getting into the HVAC industry and why I think that might be bad. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time.